Who would you be without your story of who your children need to become? Ladies, are you ready to up-level? Are you ready to master your time, your energy, and who you want to become and embody the woman and the mother that you want your children to be? I am here to tell you, this is possible. Yes, it will scare you. Yes, it will challenge you. But it is all possible. So if you've been following me, you are on this personal development journey and you are ready for the next step to take your commitment and investment in yourself and your family to the next level. I want to know your dreams. I want to know your desires. And I want to know what is stopping you or slowing you down from getting there. We are now accepting applications for the Mamas in Control Mastery Program. So head on over to momisincontrol.com, fill it out, hit submit, and we'll be in touch. And listen, if you fill out the application before midnight on Monday, May 20th, you will qualify for a VIP strategy session with yours truly. So head on over to mamasincontrol.com and fill out the application today. Welcome back to the show, guys. I'm Heather Chauvin. And as always, this community is for you. This is a part of you. Um, I'm just the vessel. I'm just the leader. I'm just the guide. Um, But here we are for you. And this week, my intention, my goal is to put out a podcast a day to keep the doctor away. Just kidding. To put out a podcast a day. Um, But I wanted to be open and honest with you uh, because that's... That's what I do. Who, it's the story of who we think our children need to become that uh, really messes us up. What do, what do I mean by this? Well, if you've been following me for a while, there's, you know, I talk about my cancer journey. I talk about my struggles in parenting. I talk about, you know, building my business. I talk about depression. I talk a lot about my journey, but one thing that I just touch on and I don't really open up and talk a lot about is um, my son's biological father. And my son's biological father has now passed. Um, He died about five years ago uh, from a drug overdose. And my son never had a, this is my oldest son, by the way. Um, My son never had a relationship with his father. His father was too mentally ill to to be in his life. And that was a choice, a conscious choice um, that I made at a young age, um, my son's young age. But also, as the um, time came, uh, we integrating that just wouldn't be consistent and it wasn't really beneficial for his health or his well-being at the time because he was young. So uh, when I say, you know, what is the, who do you need your children to be and what are you trying to fix in your child, you have to be very careful of the story you're telling yourself about why you need to fix your child or why this behavior scares the shit out of you. Because when I started this process when my son was four and I really started noticing a big shift in his behavior, my story was he's going to turn out to be his father. So at the age of four, I already had him um, diagnosed in my head as a drug addict at a four-year-old, right? And we see this all the time in society where people are like, oh, you're going to turn out just to be like your mom or your dad or blah, 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 or it runs in the family, it's genetic, whatever. Well, when... There's a severe mental health issue in a family, like diagnosis, and it's not just a a blip, it's like chronic life stuff. Um, Yes, you have to be careful. Yes, I'm sure it's genetic. Yes, I'm sure whatever. But I don't fucking believe all that shit. And I choose not to believe it because, um, not because I'm in denial, but because that's not the life I want for myself or my child. And I know a lot of people who thrive with mental health. And it's a conscious choice. It's like, how come some addicts can um, go into recovery and some cannot, right? You can have people who are severely, severely addicted to heroin and they can recover. And then you have people who um, drink a six pack every night and, you know, are functioning in society, but yet they can't stop the habit. 
or stop the addiction. So why can one person do it but not the other? And I think we have to look beyond genetics. We have to look beyond... Um, beyond what society tells us or what, you know, even medical, um, scholarly medical journals have um, in place. So why am I telling you this? Because when I get into this personal development world, but when I go even further into like the science behind it and the science behind meditation and the science behind um, like neurobiology and all these crazy things that I don't even understand, this is where we find hope. So one of um, the individuals that I love following is Bruce Lipton, and he talks about the biology of belief and how your beliefs um, are actually show up in your DNA. So imagine you change your belief of like, I am worthy, you know, I can overcome this addiction, I can um, change generational patterns in my family, I can run a marathon, I can do whatever. It's possibilities are endless, guys, and we need to start thinking that way. And too often I hear people, um, beyond the excuses of time, money, and energy, because I don't even want to get into that, because I'm like, one day I'll write a book on it, but like, fuck, you need to get over your excuses of time, money, and energy, because those are just roadblocks that try to keep you safe, and you totally submit to them. It's ridiculous. Time, money, and energy are three things that we can all evolve and change when you make the conscious decision to do so. So when we get in the conversation of biology, well, people have debate about it, right? Because socially, it's um, inappropriate to debate biology and to debate DNA. And it's like, oh, it's genetic. It's genetic. Who fucking cares if it's genetic? It's not... um, just because there's a predisposition there doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. So again, if you're just using that as a scapegoat, like you have to analyze that. So I'm going to go back to the whole purpose of why I created this podcast for today, talking about, uh, you know, keeping it in the theme of talking about our children's behavior is I want you to analyze the story that you're telling yourself about your child's behavior. What fear do you have about their current behavior? Is it like, oh my God, Gosh. And like, I'm not saying that, oh, it's just fear, let it go. No, if, you know, symptoms, you need to pay attention to this shit, right? So I know that my son's biological father was diagnosed with multiple, multiple health issues. And I don't even know the exact diagnosis, but there's been lots of um, conversations about what those specific diagnoses were. And I don't think that is even appropriate to talk about because it's not about the diagnosis. It's about um, severe addiction, dying to addiction. When people die to addiction, um, you know, like you don't get to come back from that. There's no, there's no learning. Do I want my son to become that? No, but it doesn't matter if my son had, um, you know, a connection, a biological connection to that or not, that this, that is possible for any human being. And it's also possible for any human being to thrive. So what I'm telling you is when my son was young and I started seeing these behaviors, it scared the shit out of me. And I was afraid that he was going to become like his father. I was terrified. So I became proactive and I became proactive and that's how I found meditation. That's how I found mindfulness. That's how I felt, or excuse me, that's how I found, you know, plant-based eating. That's how I found um, positive thinking. That's how I found this personal development, spiritual energy healing world. And that saved me. That gave me hope. That allows me to sleep at night knowing I'm doing the best that I can for my children regardless of who they become, right? Because I'm I'm guiding them and I'm teaching them to become a better version of themselves. But at the same time, I have to do the work if I want them to become that person, right? I can't tell my child, you need to meditate. Stop yelling at me when I'm yelling at them. So again, today is about analyzing the true story of what you're telling yourself behind your child's behavior. So when you're triggered, when you go to yell, when you lie awake at night and you're feeling like, what am I going to do? I don't understand. What am I going to do? Ask yourself, what is the story that I'm telling myself? Are you leading? Are you parenting out of fear or are you parenting to be proactive? And if you are parenting out of fear, then use your fear, allow it to fuel 
to enlighten you, to push you to become a better version of yourself. Because most of my clients, when they start working with me, are terrified. They're scared, right? There's some something in their life has called them to show up, and that is scary. But they're using their fear, and they're turning it around to be proactive in their life. So what is the story you're telling yourself? Before I found Heather, life felt hard. I felt stuck. I had a a newborn baby. I felt that I had to get my stuff in order to be the best mom for her. And with that, I was also at a corporation that I was not happy at. I was to the point where every day I woke up and would just cringe that I had to go to work. I was I was angry. I was very angry. Uh, Everybody around me walked on eggshells. I would come home and just constantly yell. I had this feeling inside me that there was more and I didn't, I had no idea what that was. And so when I found Heather's podcast and this woman was just so raw and real and no BS. I thought to myself, holy smokes, like, is this a real thing? Can you really like help somebody doing this? Can this be my life? Can I have this ease? Can I have this joy? Can I have this time freedom, financial freedom? I wish I would have asked for help sooner. Heather's no BS approach and just coming up to me and being like, hey, like this is the life that you want. This is what you said you wanted. Like you can't run away from these things. You have to go through. You have to go through to get to the other side. And so that was the biggest aha for me was that I am in control of my life and I am in control of my future and everything around me. Trust your gut. You don't know what you don't know. And so investing in someone and in a program holds you accountable to a level that you never even thought possible. One of the very first mindset shifts that I had around investments as myself is that I can always create more money, but I cannot create more time. And then as far as, you know, fear of failure, we all feel like (laughs) we're going to fail. And facing that fear head on and being with a group of women and a coach who knows how that feels really helped me see that we just learn to fail forward in a very short amount of time. My husband started to see improvements and there hasn't been a day that, that we haven't been thankful that I took the leap and and joined the program. Heather is different than anybody I've ever spoken to or worked with because she is, she's been there. She's done that. Um, her, her cancer story and facing death and learning how to live really resonated with me while I have never been in that position I still felt like I was dying on the inside. And so her her story inspired me that, you know, if if she can come back from that, then anybody can do it. And she <laughs> she has a no BS approach. I loved that she is so relatable and it's not just strategy and mindset, it's all of the things. Like you, you learn how to overcome, overcome fear and live in alignment in all areas of your life, not just one, and really personalizing it and individualizing it to fit, to fit your needs.